Welcome to Adobe APAC Live. I'm happy to be your host this afternoon, and I'm really excited to welcome Del Bagini. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. How are you going, man? Yeah, I'm good. I'm excited and ready to get this show on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> so we've got you on to talk about your illustration work, which is really cool, but you're also a designer. Yes. Right? So I work full-time as a designer for an advertising agency, and yeah, I freelance you know, into the late hours of the night, um, just doing illustrations and the fun stuff, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And how long have you been doing what you do? Um, I've been in the design industry for about ooh, 16 years, uh, but f like art and drawing, yeah, forever. Forever. For as long as I can remember. So you're one of those people that just always drawing in their maths books and all that sort of yeah, stuff? Yeah, definitely drawing, not learning. Yeah. That's, that's me. Yeah. You're learning to draw. That's yeah, fine. basically. Yeah. 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 Cool. Very good. And um, so what's like a day in the life of, of you at the moment? Um, lots of work and not a lot of sleep. So. And you've got a, you've got a family as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've got, um, I've got two kids at home and, you know, I've got a job to do there as much as yeah. I've got a job there and here it's uh, yeah i'm a little bit all over the place but um yeah. it's lots of creative stuff happening um all day every day so um yeah definitely happy yeah awesome yeah. very good and we'll, we'll chat a little bit more about your illustration and inspiration stuff in a moment but just for everybody out there uh, you can log into the chat room today um so for the next hour we're going to be um going through a piece of dale's work um and you can actually interact with us a little bit interact with dale uh, so if you have any specific questions about techniques that he's going to use and show us, um, and we're also going to ask you guys for some suggestions um, so we can kind of, you can help shape the artwork that we're, that we're going to do by the end of today. And the clock's yeah. ticking. So we'll, we'll get to that um, pretty soon. So you can log in just using your Adobe ID. Uh, and if you don't have one, you can sign up really quickly. That's free. Um, and just follow the prompts. And we'd love to see you in there. We can see some people in there. So what's up, Jeremy, Robin, Jeremy again? <laughs> Good to see you guys in there. Um, don't be shy. Ask questions. If we can work them in, um, we will. Yeah. But um, so your illustration style, we were chatting about this a little bit before, and we kind of coined like an alternative style, right? So it's like skateboarding culture in there and some tattoo. Yeah, definitely. Um, it definitely has a lot of cues from both those worlds. Mm. Um, I, I love the tattoo scene. Um, I'm, I'm not a tattooist myself. But um, I I appreciate the way they compose their art and the way they execute the the final designs. Um, and skateboard graphics have always been really cool and just mm. pretty inspirational. But um, my style, I guess, is kind of a hybrid between those worlds, and I've just created it a little bit different to make it art by Dale. Art by Dale. Yeah. Very good. Very cool. Um, and so, yeah, so what sort of like a equipment do you usually use? You've got a tablet here. Do yep. you? Um, yeah, so um, most of the time I'm on the tablet. Um, I use a Cintiq at home, a Wacom Cintiq. Um, but at the moment I'm using a, a Mobile Studio Pro here. Um, it's basically a laptop and a tablet in one. Yeah. So um, it's just a, a one device that I have to take around with me everywhere. And it's it's relatively light and yeah you can see it's got the keyboard everything the perfect setup all set up ready to yeah. go yeah pretty much all right cool um so maybe we can have a quick look at um an i you know quick little snapshot of the project that we're going to go through we're going to yep. kind of recreate some of these elements yep. we've got a little bit of stuff that you've prepared earlier yep. as well so maybe just give us a bit of a snapshot all right cool so this is the piece we're going to be working on um generic skull sword roses banners all that tattoo goodness in there yeah um but yeah i'm just going to explain kind of the process of how we got to this point and then we can talk about some um some colors and some other little options to to make it a little bit personal yeah nice yeah very good we've got a couple of people in the in the chat rooms and um hey hannah and sophia welcome come along um we'd be really interested to know if you guys are, are you guys designers or illustrators let us know in the chat room we'll get to know you a little bit better um you too, Jeremy, as we go through this, and don't be shy to ask questions. Um, so let's go to the very beginning. We've got we've got a blank canvas yep. at the moment. Uh, well, kind of. We've hidden it's, every single yeah. layer. <laughs> um, but, you know, when you do have a blank canvas, you know, where, where would you begin, like, with a kind of piece of work? Um, I guess, like every good designer, um, there's a bit of research and development um, in, in the actual 
process. So I'll spend not too long because I think I I feel like if you're online and you're you're looking at all this inspiration, it kind of sways your design to one direction, and right. that that can ultimately change, you know, you as an artist. So yeah, I try not to 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 get too much inspiration, but I'm doing some research, and then I just come into Photoshop. Um, I do all my sketching in Photoshop. So. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to live here today and we're going to create a digital piece. So, yeah, from here I'll just start um, concepting our desired design. Okay, cool. Yeah, and so, so you have a bit of an idea of what you're going to do first? Yeah, of course. So, yeah. um, And shout out to Oscar from Chicago. Thanks for letting us know where you are. It's good to know that um, you've got some fans in Chicago. Yeah, nice. which is, I don't know what the time is there, but, yeah, shout out for jumping in. All right, so basically I'm going to um, – so I've – the process is pretty basic at this point. It's um nothing fancy. Just I only use one brush in my whole process, right. um which is crazy to some, yeah, cool to others. Um, I'll let you decide. So I'll basically, I know that I want a skull, so I'll start shaping out my skull. Again, um, I'm not too precious at this point. Kind of just want to make sure that it looks. Kind of representative to a skull. It's just all freehand. Yeah, freehand as much as I can. Um, I think it just keeps it, you know, keeps it mine. I can own the whole thing from start to finish. Yeah. Um, this part's not pleasant, so I do apologize. It's a, a bit of an eyesore, actually. <laughs> I noticed that you've got um, your opacity at about, what is that, 40-something? Yeah. And your flow down to, to 21? Yeah, so I just turn the, the opacity and the flow down I just yeah. just to keep it so that it's a bit um, transparent and I can, you know, just work really loosely and build up lines if I'm struggling to see the shape. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'll just keep, keep working at this. Um, I know that we want a dagger in there, so just quickly pencil one in. You can see that it's really low level detail, but it's it's shaping uh shaping the whole piece here. So um so it's a lot about being quick, trying to get the concept down. Yeah. The bit of the composition down or the beginning of it, the absolute beginning. Yeah, I feel like at this point it's more composition than actual design. Right. Um I guess I'm I'm trying to just draw up something that I know that I can submit to a client. And get some honest feedback on, is this the right way to go? Should there be two flowers? Should there be a banner up here? So I'll just quickly do a banner up here. Um, we want another banner down here. Another quick banner. You've done banners before. Uh, I've done a few in my time. <laughs> um, so you were talking about um, kind of commission work. Do people often come to you and say, oh, I want something similar to a piece of work that you've done before? Like, do yeah. they come to you for your style? They're definitely coming to me for my style, but it's never stopped them from adding their own little mood boards to right. it where they might be liking something another artist is doing, but they want to see how I can add my the, the Art by Dale flavor, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely um, feel like it's more based on my art more than anything at the moment, which is mm. great because it's something I've been doing for so long. It's less stress this way. Yeah. So yeah, we just keep working this up until we've got like a, a happy kind of flow and direction for design. We've actually got a couple of questions. Yeah, um, so um, oh, and we've got a retoucher as well in the, in the audience. Hey, Rosanna. Um, so Jeremy asks, um, do you ever use the symmetry tool? I think we're going to answer that uh, question in a little bit, good, aren't we? Good question, Jeremy. <laughs> so I guess, um, well, he's ruined the surprise, hasn't he? <laughs> Um, I thought I'd ask the question right now because a little bit of credit to think that, yeah, obviously we're going to jump into that. Yeah, well, that's so from here, basically, we're going to send this off to our client. Client's going to tell me that that's amazing and just go for gold. Yeah. Um, that's in a dreamland, but let's just wear there today. So I've got my concept. Yep, that's cool. We want to start developing it into more of a, a solid structure. So I know there's a flower, there's a, a snake, there's a skull, but it's kind of not looking like that at the moment so i'll go in and i'll just basically refine everything to a to 
put a better state, I guess, so that you can see kind of some depth in there. You can see some details. You yeah. can kind of start seeing the, the picture more and the client's going to be like a lot happier to see that the snake actually has a head. So, right. yeah, so uh, I, after this point, um, I would just basically leave that layer on and I'll turn that layer all the way down and then I will get the symmetry tool, which is a new one from uh, Adobe. Mm -hmm. And basically... And Jeremy, very astutely, kind of jumped the gun with that. But yeah. yeah what, good observation. Yeah. Uh, before we get into there, um, we actually had another question from Rob. So thanks for the question, Rob. Um, do you start your drawings on paper or always the wake, wake on now? Um, no more paper. Um, I've decided I'm just going to do it all digital. Um, mm -hmm. And that's basically was a time decision. Um, I, I don't have a lot of free time. So every yeah. time or any time that I can cut out of the process is time gain. So this just gets rid of that that part of it. Um, yeah, I I miss the paper thing and being able to shuffle through everything and, you mm -hmm. know, look back on older things, but I've also got a file called an archive and I can just flick through them digital. Yeah, through, yeah. <laughs> so it's it's not the, the worst thing, but yeah, uh, definitely just all digital. So there's a lot of like, um, spoken a lot about workflow and things mm -hmm. like that. You're sort of always looking for the you know, an, an angle to be able to do what you do to the same level, but more efficient. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I just more conscious of, of how valuable time is mm. as, as an adult as well. Um, with a family, um, also with like juggling work and stuff, but, um, I, I definitely think you just need to work within your means and yeah. if, if it means stop drawing on paper and cut that out, then so be it. So yeah, so now I've got my concept approved and we're ready to start refining it. Symmetry, symmetry tool. Yeah, symmetry tool. So um, a Andrew suggests you crush it. I crush it. Yeah. Andrew's, uh, he's my mate. Oh yeah. I like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Um, we've got Lorenzo from Italy in here as well. And oh, nice. yeah, very good. So basically I just go in and even this part is still a little bit loose, but I can... I can go in and add all those little things that maybe you can't see in the design so far. So obviously the symmetry tool is literally reflecting, you know, it, based on where you put the line. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So the symmetry tool can be turned off at any time. Um, I like to just get the main part of the skull kind of drawn in. So we'll just keep drawing away. Keep going in, add as much or as little detail as you like. Which is cool. And um, so guys, yeah, just a reminder that you can join the chat room, join the rest of us. We've got um, people from all over the world jumping in, which is pretty, which is pretty nice to see. Um, and so you can do that with your Adobe ID. If you don't have one, uh, you can sign up really quickly and jump back in and, and join us. A little bit later, we're going to um, be uh, we're giving some giving some things away as well. So there's a little bit some competitions that are going to happen there with some overlays, um, and we're also going to ask for your contributions um, and suggestions uh, to make some changes in Dale's artwork. So the final version will be dictated a, a lot by you guys and what you say. So jump on in. So we've got the dagger going on now. Dagger's going in, and I've just started drawing that on a new layer, so I don't just you know flatten it all at at this point in time. It's not the right time in case there's going to be changes made. So I'm just going in. So you put the key elements on different layers. Yeah, yeah. the the major pieces. So the dagger, the rose, oh, sorry, the roses, the banners. They'll all go onto their separate layers, the skull, and then I'll just I'll just tweak it from there. Just so I've got you can see it all coming together. Like yeah. there's now a lot more detail for the the client to kind of be convinced that I know what I'm doing. And so we, we have a great question from Rob K. So um, are you using uh, your own custom brushes or are these the default Photoshop brushes? No, all default. Yeah. So this is the, if you can see, it's the hard round pressure size. Um, because of the Wacom being able to have such good pressure sensitivity, it's almost like I get a, a natural feel with this and you can see if I taper it off it can get thin it can mm. get thick um, I just I've always used the one brush and I just haven't found a need to kind of change the process yet cool. 
So yeah, I'll keep working on that, and I'll I'll just keep refining those lines just to get it into a kind of into a solid state, so that it's it's easy to sell the dream kind of thing. Um, and then we end up with something like this. Cool. So basically, everything there is drawn on a separate layer. You can see I've got all my layers up here on the side. Um, everything's been drawn in separately, so that I can move it around if I need to. Um, if we don't want the snake, he doesn't have to go in. It can just be the sword and the skull. Um, it's all it's all been thought out. Um, it's all been considered basically so that if the client comes back and it needs to to be able to be edited, it's mm. easy. Um, and does that happen a lot? Like, so people would say, "Oh, maybe instead of the dagger, can we put the snake yeah, coming yeah, out of the head?" I, or I think it it happens a lot, but um, I I try to make it clear from conceptual stage that this is the direction we're taking. And that's why you're still, like sharing the sketches really early on, right? Yeah. yeah. So the sketches are really important. Um, I mean, especially that last round where it's been refined and I've got the, the snake head here and I know that's where I want to put it. Mm. Um, at this point, though, if the, the client was to come back, I've got the ability to say, okay, the snake has to go up. Oh, sorry. Turn symmetry off. So yeah, if the snake has to go up, I just know I'll put field notes on this layer and right. and start saying like, oh, can we have possibility of an eyeball here, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, this at this point when it's looking like that, I can um, I've just got like a bit more freedom at this point to kind of move things around, mm. resize stuff like that. But um, yeah, this this stage I'll just have them layers there, but I'll submit one that's cleaned up so that they can see without you know having the all the lines crossing through you can see a pretty clear design and direction now so yeah absolutely and we actually have another question um from brandon so mm -hmm. because it's not vector so obviously we're using, we're working in photoshop, photoshop which is pixel based yeah um and whereas illustrator is obviously the um the vector based mm -hmm. uh so what size up or do you work with um to cover most export sizes you know from print posters to apparel um i'm I try to ask those questions at the very start of the brief. I don't right. um, try to play any guessing game. Uh, if I know that this thing's going on the side of a truck, I'm probably just going to go straight to vector. Right. Um, obviously, I'm going to do all my concepting in Photoshop, but I'm probably going to consider that that's going into Illustrator. Mm. Um, it kind of depends on the project. Uh, for for any kind of just print posters, I'll usually just do it at an A3 size at maybe 600 DPI. Yeah. And I, I, I tend to work in quite high DPIs just to avoid the issue of, you know, low quality reproduction or anything. So, right. yeah, but generally it's an A3 board set to 600 at my very minimum. So, yeah. yeah. So and usually, that's, usually pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty big. Yeah. 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 So you can always scale down. Yeah, of course. Okay, great. Great question. Um, we actually have another question, which is, which is pretty great. Mm -hmm. um, do you send two rounds of sketches, like one super rough one with lots of ideas, um, and um, uh, then another sketch sort of with the idea that the client has chosen? Yeah, so the first round is based on that really loose, um, that really rough. So there might be five of these kind of designs. Right. They'll all get lined up on a little approval board. Um, I'll submit that, and then they might say, hey, we like design A, but can we have some C in there? And That happens a lot, right? A little bit of that and a little yeah, bit of that. Yeah, so I try not to give together. too many options, though, for that exact reason. Yeah. So, yeah, and then once that kind of comes back and they've decided, then I'll say, okay, this is what the design's going to look like. So this is your stage two. Um, once that's approved, I'll go into that um, refining of the outlines and give them that sort of thing back before mm -hmm. adding shading and detail and Excellent. stuff like that. Yeah, this is some great questions, guys. Yeah, and as Oscar says, no brief, no work. It's exactly it's right. Pretty much, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. All right, so we've got our outline. We're, we're, we're all good. Um, everyone's happy. Um, I'll then take, again, the same brush, and I'll start doing some shading or some solid black areas. So on another layer, I'm just going to create using that same brush. I haven't changed. And I'll just start just blocking things out. 
And yep, I'm very aware of the fill tool, but I'm also enjoying this part of it where I can color and draw as I please kind of thing. You know, I got a bit more control like this. Yeah, cool. Except that the tool is gone. That pesky symmetry. Yeah, geez. <laughs> I was talking it up as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty easy not to see it. It's a very thin line, like yeah. straight down the middle. Look, for the most part, I'd probably still be using symmetry, but now I've got a snake in the way, so it's it's not needed. And so obviously with the symmetry, it's obviously perfect to kind of build that base, and if you really want to bring in those kind of you know, slightly slightly different random elements, so oh, I want that shape to be a little bit different, yep. you can just go yeah. back over it. Just go straight in and yeah. and turn it off and add it, add the crack or add the, the hole or the missing tooth, whatever it is that you desire. Um, I just think that... You know, the symmetry tool has got its benefits and I'm I'm fully capable of doing the full skull, but it's just, it's such a handy tool, so I've embraced it completely. Yeah, cool. So yeah, I'm just going to go in and start like adding in some, sh just, just some solid black stuff. So Niles in, um, has, has just you know, said, loves your work. Um, what's your favorite feature? Do you mean what's your favorite feature of, of um, Photoshop or, or something else? Maybe let us know in the chat room and we'll clarify that. We also have a question from Abby, um, which is pretty interesting. Do you charge like an hourly rate or a flat rate for your work? Um, I probably like am the worst person to talk about that sort of thing. <laughs> um, I'm definitely a per piece kind of guy, um, unless I know that the project's enormous and it's gonna take me X amount of hours, then right. I'll, I'll reassess it. Um, I like to be fair to clients. Um, I, I like to be honest with my work as well. If mm. I think it's only a two hundred dollar job, then th I'll charge two hundred. I'm not too fussed about it. Um, I just know that it's worth money. Yeah. So it's nothing's free. Nothing's yeah. free. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Great question. Yeah. So I'm just going in and I'm adding just some points that I feel like should be darker because they are overlapped by something or. You know, the, just where I want it to be a bit darker. So I'll just go in and just do all of this sort of stuff on one layer. And would a lot of this come down to, like, experience as well? Like, you're moving a lot quicker. You, you seem to kind of naturally know where the shading the shading should go. Uh, yeah, I think experience has a lot to do with any kind of art form. Um, I, I, I'm very conscious that the way I shade is probably completely disregarding uh, actual light scenario. Right. So um, my art has some shadows here. You can see I've done shadows down there, but there's also, you know, some shadows down here. I, I would just put them wherever I feel like it needs some contrast. So, yeah, I just keep filling in till I'm, I'm happy. Um, I try to disregard the light thing and not let it occupy too much of the, the process. Mm. I mean, if I was doing fine art or, you know, some realism or something, maybe I'd be more concerned. But this is, this is skateboard tattoo. Like those those guys don't care. Yeah, it's like a bit like um, like the tattoo influence that comes through there. The um, kind of that grungy alternative stuff that we were talking about. Yep. You know, doing it your own way and figuring out what's right for you. And yeah. It's your work and. Yeah, I, d I definitely think at at the end of it all, you're producing something that you're happy with. Um, yeah. And you kind of just got to like, you, you need to embrace that that's the way you do it and not mm. stress out that it doesn't look like X artist or, you know, yeah. like you just do your own thing and it, people will appreciate it, believe mm. it or not. Like <laughs> this is definitely not the the right way to do this, but it's, it's the Art by Dale way and mm. it's up to this point in time, it's worked pretty good. So I'm yeah. going to stick to it. Cool. Very good. Um, Oscar's asked, um, uh, what illustrators do you, or do you, do you admire or do you follow? Like if you had to uh, recommend. If I had to recommend, um, there's a, there's a crew out at, um, I think, I guess they're a crew. They're called Fighting for Dreams. Um, they're in the States and one of the artists, um, Max242, mm. he's, um, he's probably one of my biggest inspirations. Um, just for the longest time, I've just loved his line work. I've, I've, mm. I've loved everything about him, but, um looking at like comic art and like illustration in that kind of world um any comic book artist 
Yeah. Like, I just, I love the way they shade. I love the way they can make a million little lines turn into, like, this gradient shading and do it so perfectly every time. So, yeah, but I think Max is probably my cool. my number one. Yeah. There we go. I'm going to check out. So, yeah, I'll, I'll just keep going in here and just keep shading until until we've kind of got all the all the right points covered and we should end up with something like this cool so i've got a mixture of like solid blacks in there and mm. and some line work that just tapers off just to give some um some movement in there so that's just achieved just by simply using my pressure tool and um have another question for jeremy how often do people ask why you don't work in illustrator you get that? Did you get that a bit? Uh, why I don't work in Illustrator? Yeah, that was the question. Um, yeah. No, because I mostly do work in Illustrator. I right. um, Only up until recently, I've started to embrace Photoshop more for a whole piece. Mm. Um, but um, I come from a background where I, I worked in a print shop and I was very aware of how files should be set up and all that sort of stuff. And um. I know that Illustrator or Vector Artworks are easier to like. Vector's safe. <laughs> yeah, it's a safe, yeah. it's a safe program, and you know it, it works. But um, I I I'd, I'd like to say I work fifty fifty in both yeah. still. So yeah, but I do get asked a lot like what programs I'm in and what I'm most comfortable with. I think yeah. either of the two. Um, Lorenzo asked what kind of tablet this is. So we we spoke about it at the beginning. But what type of tablet was it again? It's called a Mobile Studio Pro from Wacom. So yeah, I've got got all my shading in there and now I can like I've got an idea of where where my colors should start sitting, mm. where I should start adding some detail cuz uh, I know that now I've I've put some black in there, it's it's left me with less art space. And you don't always work with color, right? Like No, colors yeah. uh, I I don't mind working in color. Um mm. I just don't get requested to do color. Yeah. Um it's a kind of like a blessing in disguise um black white and gray they're they're very easy to work with and it's a it's one less step for me to worry about the color but i also do enjoy seeing my artwork in color because yeah. it's something i don't see a lot of so cool. yeah so this will be interesting <laughs> we're, yeah we're gonna yeah it's pretty cool um now it's probably a good time i think we're gonna do our first little interactive um segment where we'd love your opinion um do you think we're up to that? Yeah, um, yeah, I definitely think we can start talking about that. Um, so we'd like to. So we're going to um, apply some colors. We can apply some patterns um, to some of these elements. I think we're going to start with the snake um, because the snake is a versatile creature. Yeah, and it could just be it has, whatever. Has no rules. <laughs> has no to rules. Do whatever we like. It's no boss. No. Of snakes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we're so we're just looking for one or maybe two colors for the yep. snake. So just just suggest it in there. Throw in your suggestions. Um, we'll use them and um, potentially a pattern as well. So go nuts. Yeah. Um, let us know uh, what we should do with this snake. Yeah, cool. And in the meantime, I'm going to add some kind of like detail lines. Um, it's looking quite flat, the artwork. It's 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 lacking some, some tone and stuff mm. like that. So um, basically what I'll do, I'll create another layer again. And I'll have, I'll just start going in and applying some little just some lines to give it some kind of shape how often do you rotate the artwork like that didn't see you do it too much with the the bigger line work, but is it because we're getting into kind of finer detail? Uh, yeah, start? mostly because it's detail, and my hand sometimes flicks better in one direction than the other. So yeah. I just find if I just rotate it, which you can do by just hitting R on your screen, on your keyboard, sorry, and it will just rotate the canvas, and it just gives you the ability to kind of like get more of a a flick. I mean, you might be um. You might be very skilled and not need to do it, but again, it's a good little trick to mm. save the stress in my mind of, oh, I can't flick left. Right. Yeah, yeah so I'm going to go in and I'm just going to add all those little details. 
Cracks. Some good color suggestions, which I'll I'll give you when you're ready. But. Oh God. <laughs> Be gentle. It's all good. It's nothing. Nothing scary. No clashing. No clashing colors. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. All right. So I'll I'll work through that, and you might want to add like some kind of little texture marks. You can always use a texture pattern or brush, whatever. But this is so I'll just go in there and I'll do stuff like that, just until it kind of doesn't look so so flat and mm. it's got just a little bit more shape and stuff like that. It's got a bit so, more texture as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's looking like it's an older skull. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we'll get to a point that it kind of looks like that and I've got all wow. this, yeah, I've got all this line work in there that's kind of helping give it some some flow, giving it some kind of like some curve in there. Um, the banners feel like they're, they're actually bending. It's not mm. so, yeah. So now at it's it's feeling like it's ready to start moving into shading and stuff like that. So let me just zoom out. I'll show you that. Do you want to hear? Do you want to hear our color suggestions? Yeah, sure. Why don't we do this for the first time? You you can just pick. Okay. Yeah. So we got we got um got red red and yellow. Yeah. Nice. Um teal. Teal. Um some votes for some greenery burgundy. Burgundy. <laughs> just good suggestion. Greens and yellows. So we've seen a bit of yellow. Neon green and half tones. Oh, and half tones is interesting. Yeah. Um, neon greens and greys. Um, Andrew wanted to thank you for the R shortcut, by the way. Oh, yeah, you like that? The, yeah. the rotate, sweet. Yeah, which is pretty cool. It's what we're here for, right? Yep, exactly. Um, and, and reds and pinks. So basically, any color in the <laughs> oh, rainbow. Oh, wow. There were so many, and I'm just going to go with, I think I'm going to do a red and yellow. Red and yellow, cool. All right, so before I do that, and before I start coloring, I've always got, um, and this is just something I've just, always done for the longest time but we've already got a lot of colors here a sneaky shot at some of the pre-prepared yeah. colors so <laughs> so i i like <laughs> to put a gray layer in there and um that's basically right. it gives me that third third element of light i guess um i now at this point you can see that my lighting is coming from a lot of angles but to mm. me it looks fine. It looks like it's an art by Dale piece, and I don't have to stress out about. Is that yeah? Is that like the technical? Like technically, there should be one or maybe two light sources, but well, you, you kind of throw that out the window and just like it's what feels right to you. Yeah, I think it goes back to me working in black and white. Mm. Um, it's it's easy to yeah. I can shade this whole side in black and have some highlights and have the light coming in from the left, but this kind of like gives it a lot of dimension and can show mm. me. That like there is a lighting consideration, but mm. it's it's not that important in the way I, I create my art. So I don't I never never stress out about it basically. So once I've got that grey, what I would generally do is so because this is um I'm working digital. I'm not this isn't this isn't going to be um going to print anytime soon. This is what I would generally do. So basically, we're going to do a yellow belly. And I'm not, I'm just going to use the color picker to pick all these colors. There's yeah. no specific color. So I'll just go in here, just block out the world for a few minutes. Col this is the coloring in comic book. Yeah. Like escapism. Just and do you listen to music while you're doing your work? I. It really depends. I, I find music can be distracting to me. Um, either it's distracting because I can't find the right song or it's, you know, I'm, there's too much noise at home. There's music, there's kids, there's dogs. It's, it's, it's too intense for me. So sometimes I do just try to have a quiet kind of moment. Okay, I'm trying to color in here. Yeah, like everyone quiet down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I've got that yellow, but as you can see, it's gone. It's covered my gray. Um, mm. I I want the gray to show through because it's a bit of tone. So I would usually just hit multiply, and that's it. Cool. So I've decided that yellow is the color. So we're not even gonna like no one's asked it to change. So we'll leave it yellow for now, and we'll get a red body happening. So on another layer, get the red. Go back in. 
I'd usually zoom in more as well. And I don't know what it is about not using the fill tool or using these shapes and mm. all that sort of stuff. I just, I really enjoy having a little bit of that natural, you know, traditional illustration style in it. Mm. So I just do this and then I go, okay, that's red. Um, but now I'm thinking in my head, you know, that client's made 14 changes before this. I'm sure the colors are going to change. So right. what I'll do, I'll just select that, the red that I just drew and I'll create a solid color layer. And with that, we can just change that color however I want, whatever color, but we're still happy with red. We're just waiting for the email to come through with changes. <laughs> the, with the inevitable changes. Yeah. So, And I, I guess that also helps with competition, right? Our composition because, you know, at, at the moment, maybe the snake looks great like that. Yeah. But once you work through all the other colors, yeah, you well, might discover, oh, that, that's a little bit bright. Or, yeah, exactly. Or a little bit dull. Yeah. So, and, and that just is an uh, easier way to change the colors. Um, I set that all to multiply again so that my, my gray will show through. Mm. And yeah, do the same thing for the yellow. I just create little boxes that let me basically change the color as I wish. And we end up getting something like. Get rid of that. So we end up getting something a lot like. There, we've got the snake's body that we want red. And that was basically doing exactly what I said. I colored the whole thing in. Yeah. I um, selected that colored layer and created a solid color layer so that I can change it. Um, and now, yeah, I've got the ability to change it to darker, lighter, whatever we want. And then I did the same with the base just to give him a red. So there's our red snake, yellow belly. And it's quiet. Yellow belly, red snake. That, that's a thing, right? I think so. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> yeah, so that's... Just, just a reminder, just before we do, just for everyone um, out there, um, jump into the chat room. Feel free to ask any, any questions you like. Um, a suggestion, I think, more than a question from Oscar, was um, to try uh, Trico on a loop. I'm assuming that's a band. Um, we'll have to check that out. I don't know if you know them, but... I thought it was like a shortcut to something cool. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to confirm. Could be good. Yeah. Yeah. So that that they're two coloring processes that I I know of and I've used in the past. Yeah. Um, not not being a color artist and you know just giving some suggestions and some guidelines. I I I think that's an easy way to do it. Um, I just always consider the chance of change in my mm. artworks. Um, been doing this for too long to know that what I think is right and what you know, others think is right is completely like always wrong. Everything I think is always wrong. So like your assumptions. Yeah, I just I yeah, I definitely never get it right the first time. So mm. I'm always prepared for yeah, the the next vote, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And so you know obviously you're building up using lots of different layers, yep. making sure that if you do need to come back, yeah. You can you can sort of much much more quickly change and yeah. adapt to yeah, I think having a, a, a good layer structure definitely helps with yeah. with my art. Um, I like I try to keep it in folders and and keep the outlines together, the colors together. Every the more layers, the better. Um, mm. Although there's times where I'll just forget to name everything, and I've now lost where the snake's teeth have gone. And right, yeah, so I get crazy. So I try to stay on top of it as much as I can. So yeah. So now we've got the snake, we've got him red. We know that we can change the color there. Maybe we could do the same thing with the flowers. So should we get some suggestions for maybe some color, maybe some colors for the flowers as well, guys? What's gonna work with a um, red yellow snake. bellied red snake? <laughs> um, we'll, give you, we'll give you a minute to throw in some suggestions. Um, so colors for the flowers, one or two colors. Yeah, cool, and we'll go here. All right, so now I guess what I'd start doing here is just going in and start coloring that flower as well or doing the leaves as per we did with the snake. Mm. It'd go in or you could just go and start doing your little additional detail. Like if there's maybe you want to have a look at white points, like some highlights and stuff like that. But um, from here, it's basically just coloring 
and getting getting through this beast of a kind of a design there's so much in there that's happening at the moment so mm. we can go in and start doing some more color layers and i'll show you how it's doing that one while we do that when you, when you do listen to music what music do you listen to so question from lorenzo um definitely punk music um or i would, would i call it post hardcore stuff um but i generally try to listen to it away from um the desk because it it just gets me a little bit excited i think <laughs> so it's a, a little bit intense you jump up and dance around yeah i just they do the screaming for me i guess <laughs> i'm screaming on the inside <laughs> So yeah, I'm still using just that same brush, just brushing it in, neat as possible. Um, and while you're doing that, if you color it and you're like, oh, okay, I'm done with that, and you go and make that shape layer out of that. Um, okay, so I've got the layer there, but I've realized that I missed the whole white piece here. You can just click on your little mask and you can back in. yeah you can jump in and edit and fix where you haven't gone yet and again just set that to multiply to go over your gray and you're basically good to go so yeah jeremy said is there such a thing as too many layers and i think um, is there too many layers yeah or is there such a thing um yes <laughs> they can I, be yeah. I, I definitely think they can be um mm -hmm. but i i think you kind of need to have you need a lot of layers you need to just be prepared for anything so mm -hmm. i i definitely think there's too much but there's also not enough so yeah yeah so it's like a balance right like yeah definitely depending on each project and... yeah everything's definitely um project dependent like it's um I, i've had pieces where it only needs two layers mm. you know background and the the white um but yeah a lot of the time mine's three layers basically it's the black it's the gray and it's a white base so yeah, yeah there's not a lot in it um so we've got some suggestions for the for the flowers if you're ready. sure so we got pinks pinks right um pur purple shades um violet or teal um or teal and dark blue so i'm i'm seeing a lot of teal all right let's do a teal so we've already got our roses set up i've got a top i've got a top layer and a sorry i've got a top rose and a bottom rose so there's our roses and i think we should go teal maybe go one teal and then another one one of the other suggestions so all right, let's Well, let's do the other one, the pink. Pink and teal. You heard it here first. It's so great, like, how quickly you can change it and how much of a big difference it yeah. could make. And, I mean, of course, this is um, pre-prepared, but mm. you can see how quick it takes to just brush it in, create yeah. that shape layer, and have it set for the future. Um, and to be able to, you know, I could almost send this whole file to the, the client knowing that all they have to do is click on that and they're not going to destroy the artwork. Right. They just they can change the colors at their will. So yeah, I just keep going through that. Um, maybe we want with the teal, we can do the purple as well. Let's do we can add in. Purple elements coming in. And while you're doing that, um, Abby asks, "What kind of clients do your illustrations attract?" Um, bit of a mixed bag, actually. Um, without going too far into it, it's it's really kind of it can be corporate. It can be like um, just a guy that's starting his own clothing brand. Um, can be a band. It it really doesn't have a filter it, it's right. it's kind of um it's become something where i mean not everyone wants a skull but um people love tattoos and some people are scared to get tattoos so they want a tattoo design that they can put on a shirt and maybe rock that or you know but um it, it's really yeah it's a pretty diverse crowd actually mm. well, great question um, and where do you think you know kind of following up from abby's question where do people typically find you? 
like how would people do, do you know potential clients come come to you is is it all you know the web and word of mouth or I, instagram or... i definitely think um a lot of it comes from instagram mm. um based on them saying hey i saw you on instagram <laughs> yeah so but um, they literally tell you yeah but up, yeah. also i think word of mouth um yeah i've i've done work in the past and just by chance it's like it was for a motorbike company and then uh, another motorbike company has come so it's like it's competitors that come and, and it's funny because it's mm. it is almost like um you know the the first company gets it and they own an art by dial piece but then the competitor comes and they still want one mm. it's hard for me to commit to the job because i'm i'm scared that it's going to be exactly the same yeah it, and, and it doesn't look good so but yeah, it's definitely word of mouth and and Instagram at this point. I I don't market myself much at all, to be honest. Mm. Um, I feel like if it's organic, it's 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 better. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just adding those little colors in. So we've got our pink rose and our teal rose sitting down there. And then we've got our leaves. So I'm just chucking my leaves in there. Not supposed to be that color. So yeah, you can see how easy it changes, and it's it's really just like it's great to be able to work confidently and know that like I've already set that layer, so yeah, I'm not focused on is it going to work or not. Um, and I'll do those leaves and those roses. So yeah, shout out if you think those colors aren't working. <laughs> Start critiquing um, each other's suggestions. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> what's a cool skull color? <laughs> Skulls always white, or are they? Uh, we going for of... Marvel. We spoke about before. Oh like uh, yeah, red skull. just red skull. I always feel like this kind of like off yellow, bony right. color kind of works. Um, I could be wrong, um, but I I like that color. That's cool. I um, have a question from Andrew M. Is there a dream client you want to work with someday, or like a brand or a personality clothing label? Um, like if they called you up, you'd just be like, yes, this is the best day of my life. Oh, a dream client. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about that one. I actually have done work for brands that were exactly that, where it was like, right. you know, I, I was like, wow, this is happening. But mm -hmm. um, I never... I don't know, it's still just work at the end of the day. So it's right. it's almost like the business side takes over and it's hard to get excited. Like mm. there's a there's a degree of um excitement to it, but um yeah, it's also like, okay, well, what's the brief? And then you find out that they're just like every other client. So then right. they soon turn from dream job to another job. Right. But yeah, so hard hard one to answer actually. Mm. And Douglas asks, um, we may have already answered this, and we actually have, yeah, but do you ever use Illustrator? So for those, um, or is it just Photoshop? So for those that are just jumping in, you do use Illustrator a lot of the time as well, don't Correct. you? Correct, yeah. yeah. So I definitely use the the mix of both of them. Um, again, dependent on the job. Um, but for all my conceptual stuff, it all happens in Photoshop, and then everything else is basically Illustrator to the, to the very end. But yeah, this whole piece is... 100% Photoshop. Cool. Yeah. And um, I think we, we, we probably should have time. Let's see how we go with this one. Um, so, chat room, last question for you guys is we're looking for two words to put on these banners. So, maybe two short words. Um, so, the top banner and the bottom banner. Um, keep it keep it PG. Keep it keep it clean, please. Um, but, yeah, we'd love some suggestions that, that, we can, that we can put on there. So, we'll give you a minute to kind of come up with something and and then check it out. And maybe we can add a little bit of type. Yeah. Some rush so. type. Yeah, I'm going to just, <laughs> yeah, very rush. But I'm going to just fill in this. I want to put some color in the teeth. So I'm just going to do color option one, not using the shape layer.
wasn't even a pirate gold tooth. He's gonna have two spoiled. <laughs> good so yeah guys so the the, the question was uh, what are two kind of short words we can put at the top and the bottom of the of the banners right. oh, it's still it's coming together so well it's great it's, a, it's sort of looked really surprised for yeah she there. was shocked that there was a snake on him <laughs> All right, so yeah, and I would do uh, another layer up here, and it would just be adding eyes. Um, I find I'm a fan without, but a lot of my artworks have always ended up with eyes. So we can um, add some eyes. They can be one can be big, one can be small, one can be red. And you're still doing this by freehand, even though it's a you know kind of a spherical. Yeah, circle. yeah, yeah. I, I I definitely just I just keep going with what I what's what's quicker and what's easier mm. and and i think working without the shapes and stuff it does give me these odd edges and things like that but again it's it's a part of what my artworks become so mm. yeah it's definitely um all still still freehand here very cool do you want to do you want to hear some of the suggestions are we ready yeah sure all right <laughs> found the game of thrones fan bala Magolas. respect um okay. got always taken Always take. It's pretty good. Stay true. Stay true is good. Snake pit. The snake pit's good. <laughs> Thought you'd like that. Dang, that's awesome. But I'm assuming you're talking about something else, Luke H. I think you're just in generally saying it's pretty cool, which is <laughs> nice. Um, or Death Garden, which is a pretty good name for a band. Death Garden. I like Snake Pit. I also just Snake Pit uh, does. It looks like it's going to fit quite well, right? Snake Pit will fit. Um, let's let's run with Snake Pit. Some great suggestions. And guys. maybe we can um, we can talk about the pattern on the snake, if you guys want a pattern on him or not, because mm. he's looking quite quite boring. But let's talk about type for a second. So basically, um, again, I, I'm not a typographer, but I enjoy that part of it. Um, and my process for the type is exactly the same as the sketch. So I'll literally use a low opacity, low flow, hard pressure um, round brush. And I'll just start like, so that's snake. And I know it doesn't fit in there. Oh, sorry. One eye. But I kind of like the out of the banner look. It's so, like a graffiti thing, right? Like it's popping out. Yeah, it just it makes it a bit more interesting. So I've got that. Um, I'll go in and just kind of rough in some extra lines. Um, someone missed um, the beginning when we just spoke about the tablet. I should have written this down, then I could have answered it for <laughs> you. But what type of tablet is it again? It's a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. Pro. Mobile Studio Pro. Yep. And it's basically t tablet slash laptop. It's all in one. So yeah, it's a one-stop shop. Very good. And we, we had the question again. We actually we answered this one um, earlier. Um, but... Um, do you ever draw a concept on paper to start, or do you usually draw straight from the tablet? We covered that. You usually, yeah. you just straight into the tablet. It's time saving. Yeah. Everything's digital. It's safe. It's there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that doesn't. I I definitely think there's still some um something to be admired about the whole paper and pencil thing. Mm. But um, yeah. If it if it's a time saver, um, I'm all about that. So yeah, now I've got the kind of the shape of the lettering. It's this is this is a little bit rough, but it's basically all the lettering that I do for the most part is treated exactly like this. Um, and then I just go in and do my last little. And 
and I just basically build up layers for everything. Everything's based on the layer system. This is the skateboard culture coming out. It's So obviously it's a little bit hard to read at the moment, but you can work on that. We're getting to the end of the live stream, everybody. So if you do have any kind of um, passing kind of questions or sort of burning desires, anything um, that we haven't covered yet, any sort of questions for Dale, we've, um, now's the time. going to add kind of like overlay on this thing. Oh, look at that. I selected the whole thing. <laughs> I'm going to put that behind. Just to give it some... While you're doing that, Abby asks, um, do you use a large monitor to double check colors? Um, a large, uh, like a second monitor? Yeah, I think so. Um, well, at home I have the iMac, so the colors are pretty good on that. Mm. Um, for this sort of stuff, um, it, it's a tough one because I don't use a lot of color. I don't need to really um, color, like get it, get it accurate, basically. Like it's... Uh, black is black, white is white. Right. Yeah. You know, it's um for me, I'm probably lucky in that sense. But if I was doing something like this and I was trying to work in Pantones, yeah, I'd probably. It's like very specific colors. You might need to like, yeah. check it on a. Oh, especially monitor, but, yeah. just if their brand has like their own right identity colors and stuff like that, I'd be more conscious. But um yeah, a lot of the time it's black and white. So mm. yeah, I get away with a lot. Mm. But um. Um, got a question from Jennifer. How do you save your Photoshop illustration as a vector file for printer artwork files? So your Photoshop illustration as a vector file. So I'm guessing the answer is you don't save it as a vector file. No. If you're a, working in Yeah, Photoshop. Photoshop file is a Photoshop file. Um, if I was going to send it to a printer, I'd just make sure that it's been separated properly. Um, yeah, if it's a vector, it's a vector. They're kind of two different things, I think. But... um. Yeah, I'm, again, just always very conscious about where it's going at the start so yeah. that I can avoid that confusion. Yeah, great. I'm just going to add extra red to this. Do you have any tips? Uh, this one from Andrew. Um, any tips for quickly changing a single color uh, black on white design to a white on black or vice versa? Um, it's a good question because, <laughs> yeah, when you inverse, especially like a skull, they look quite weird when they've got mm. white eyes and black. Is that right? Yeah, <laughs> I think that's right. So right. I try to always create my artwork to have a white layer with a, like a maybe like a three mil stroke on it. So on white or black, it's going to look exactly the same. Right. Um, but there has been times where where clients have went ahead and just changed it by themselves, and I've they've sent me out a sample and it's just been like. <laughs> oh, so that was like, not intended. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, um, I just I'm always building my stuff with white base coats and ah, uh, sorry, base layers and stuff. So just to right. avoid that whole thing. Cool. Very good. So, yeah, We're getting pretty close to to finishing up. I think. Um, do you have any kind of parting parting bits of wisdom? We can spend a couple more minutes on this, but um, parting bits of wisdom. Yeah, like so for for anyone out there that's. At, Potentially, like an illustrator, they might they admire your work. Maybe they want to emulate some of your work, yep. you know, in their own style, obviously. But yeah, you know, any sort of advice to the up and coming? Yeah, I definitely um I I, I live by the whole um you know you you need to be you need to be courteous, you need to be conscious, and you need to be creative. So um mm. it's one thing to like an artist and and take those cues and stuff, but it's also another thing to to rip that style completely right so um be conscious that that's someone else's living and and although you might respect them as artists like you've instantly 
you know disrespected him right um and just to to be courteous to people if somebody has a question answer the question mm. like if somebody wants to know how you do something just just tell them like right no one's out to to kind of kill you no one's out to kill your business it's like i think we've um we've got caught up in this um social age where everyone wants to be insta famous and things like that mm. and when they get insta famous they get instant ego so yeah it's kind of like you need to be conscious of what's going on around you and being courteous but ultimately the creative part is what's most important like yeah create what you want to create and create something that defines you mm. not something that gets you a hundred thousand followers right i mean it's depends on who you are that could be important it's not to me i just i think if i'm creating and i look at artwork and go yeah that's sick then it's job well done so right yeah oh, awesome advice yeah well deep <laughs> <laughs> that was great um i think we'll wind down we'll try and get a couple of these questions um you know you know thanks everyone in the chat room um do you use any texture in your colors sometimes as well um yeah sometimes i will use a um I might chuck in some half tones. Um, it depends on the artwork. Um, this one, for instance, I, I wouldn't chuck too much half tones in there. But fortunately for everybody that has Adobe Creative Cloud, um, there's a whole bunch of cool brushes now. Oh, I just pressed something that comes standard, and there's included a. Uh, Kyle's Screen Tone 35 and 38, and these two brushes um, basically will do the job for you. You can go in and edit the settings of those brushes and, you know, make it, you know, suit the job. Um, but, yeah, textures, not so much, just those half tones generally. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Very good. Um, a lot of people saying thank you, and thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you for interacting with us and getting involved. Some excellent questions. Um, some great suggestions for colors as well, which was really cool. It was really nice that you all got to, you know, play a little yeah. play a little part in your art. Yeah, it's cool. Um, no, thanks, thanks everyone. Like, um, that's that's a challenge for me. So I appreciate everyone's patience and for tuning in and enjoying that. You're too kind. Um, so if people want to find out more about you, following from the stream, um, where where should they go? Um, you can find me on Instagram uh, at Art by Dale, or you can get me on my website, dalebegini.com. Cool. Perfect. Um, and we'll be back here in two weeks for our next live stream um, at the exact same time in exactly two weeks. Uh, so we hope uh, you'll join us, and thanks for coming on. Thank you. Cheers.